More on this in the rest of the day's legal news. Vinu Varghese is here. He's a criminal defense attorney, former prosecutor. So his specialties include federal white collar crime, financial crimes, and national security issues. Nice to have you. Thank you. Thank you. What is your take on the issuing of this subpoena for Michael Cohen in New York State? Well, the first thing to understand is that his plea agreement actually says that his, it does not bind any other agency or law enforcement agency. Mm -hmm. So this isn't surprising that the New York State Tax Division is looking at this because it also, his plea agreement also calls for him to file amended tax returns. And New York State officials can look at those amended tax returns as evidence of criminal action because if he, if he didn't pay the federal taxes, he clearly didn't pay the state taxes. So if he was... For instance, if he was making payments uh, for services rendered or for anything else from the foundation, which you're not really allowed to do, and should have had a ta tax liability on such things, then this might expose that. Well, it, it's it, it, the, the charity. Remember, is is not taxable. Doesn't so that's that's a tax exempt organization. I think that's kind of the they're, point. They're, and and I think that it's some of the issues are what they use the the charity to do. So the attorney general's office under Barbara Underwood actually had imposed punitive measures on members of Trump's family, Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. So it, it's a question of whether this was not acting as a, as a non-profit. And if it was acting in a for-profit way, there would be tax liability. All right, so that probe is underway. We knew of a civil probe already. Uh, now we're moving on to that. As for yesterday, Michael Cohen, who's known Donald Trump and his family for a very long time, uh, under oath, implicated the President of the United States in a felony. What do you do with that? For, for Mr. Trump or for... How does the system react to such a thing in these challenging times? Well, it's normally, under normal circumstances, the person that he implicated would also be charged. And obviously there's a... It appears that... In other words, if the president weren't the president under these circumstances, he'd be charged. Correct. Correct. Or it would lead to a... Or the indictment would be sealed so that Mr. Cohen could cooperate so that the person that he's cooperating against doesn't know. But this is a public indictment, I mean the public plea agreement. Mm -hmm. So the president is known, obviously it's all over the news, that he is the person that uh, Michael Cohen was referring to as the then candidate. So what it means is that this is more ammunition, more fuel for the Mueller investigation. It's a question of which route Mr. Mueller is going to take, whether he's going to go against the sitting, standing DOJ policies and indict a sitting president or just use this to prepare his report for impeachment purposes. And it's not as if the president and his team could mount a vigorous defense based on the implications made by, by Michael Cohen. They certainly could. Sure, if it ever gets to that point. But I mean, the point is, just because he says it doesn't mean that the president you know, has, has committed any crime. He, he gets a chance to defend himself under any circumstance. Of course, but understand what goes into a plea agreement here with federal prosecutors. They would vet that this is a proper plea. There's a judge, an Article III judge, appointed by President Judge, uh, judge Pauly. He's a very well-respected judge, would make sure that this was a crime and allow this plea to go forward. And he, they did do that. And I think the Southern District of New York feels confident in making this plea and in naming, uh, well, without naming President Trump, naming President Trump. Mm -hmm. Vinu, it's nice to see you. Thank nice you. you. Vinu Varghese.